If you're looking for a laptop for SolidWorks, you found the right video. We're gonna be looking at budget all the way up to the high end performing laptops, both with gaming GPUs and workstation GPUs. In the middle of the video, I'm gonna explain the key differences between the gaming GPUs and the workstation GPUs, and if you actually need one to run SolidWorks. Now we're also gonna have benchmarks for about 80% of the laptops in this lineup. Now I've been able to have hands-on reviews with 80% of the laptops, the other ones, based on the specs are why they're included in this list. Now make sure you hang on to this video till the end because I'm gonna explain the specs so that way if you don't see a laptop on the list that you're considering, you'll be able to understand if the laptop you're looking at is a good purchase decision for you. Now we're gonna kick it off in the budget category and by budget, I don't mean cheap, I just mean the lower price point that I recommend getting into a 3D modeling laptop. Now you're gonna wanna kick it off with a dedicated GPU. If you're going to be using SolidWorks, I don't recommend anything without a dedicated GPU. It just doesn't have the stopping power that you need. On the lineup, you'll see the HP Victus, Lenovo Legion 5, Acer Swift X 14 and 16 inch, the Dell Gaming G15, and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. Now, all of these laptops come with an RTX 3050 Ti, excluding the Dell Gaming G15. Now, the Legion 5 and the HP Victus can be upgraded on their website. So if you wanna get a little bit more power out of these laptops and you wanna do a bit of an upgrade on the website, remember you can't upgrade GPUs or CPUs post-purchase. The only thing you can usually upgrade is RAM and SSD configuration. But if you wanna upgrade the GPU on the website, you can go ahead and jump up to the RTX 3060. That'll usually add about two to $300 to the laptop price, but that'll give you a bit more performance inside of SolidWorks. Now, moving forward into kind of the more the mid-range category, we have the HP Omen, the Asus Zephyrus G14, G15, and M16, all great laptops. The Asus Republic of Gamer Strix G15, one of the best bang for buck that you can get as far as performance is concerned and at the price point. That Ryzen 7 6800H or the i7-12700H are fantastic buys. The Lenovo Legion 7 and 7i Slim, both great laptops. I'm really rooting for the i7-12700H this year. I think it's a fantastic performing CPU, especially when matched with something like the RTX 3060 or 3070. And then finally, the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro or the 5i Pro. We've yet to see the 5 Pro really hit mass market with the Ryzen 7 6800H, so I personally have not been able to test that laptop with that specific configuration. However, I had the i7-12700H in my studio and it was a beast, very good performing laptop. Now, one laptop I'm gonna point out that was absolutely killer in SolidWorks was the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Had the best scores out of the gaming GPUs inside of SolidWorks. So if you want a budget-friendly laptop with a GPU that really performs very well in SolidWorks, then I would look towards the Zephyrus G14. The reason I said budget friendly is because when we get into the workstation GPUs, like you're going to see here in a moment, the prices seem to skyrocket. Some of these laptops can be upwards of eight to $10,000, which is why people often go for a gaming GPU rather than a workstation GPU. So we're going to get into all that in just a few minutes here. Now, the next thing we're looking at is the mid to high end range laptops. This is gonna be something like the Gigabyte Aero 16, the Razer Blade 15 base and advanced model, the MSI Creator M16, the Lenovo ThinkPad P17. This is the first laptop with an RTX A2000. That is a workstation GPU. So if you're somebody wanting to get into a workstation GPU at a mid price point, that's gonna be your pick. It's gonna give you that great kick in performance with that with that workstation approved SolidWorks GPU. Again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And you're gonna have a really, really good price point for that laptop. And by really good, I mean comparatively to the more expensive ones that we'll see here in a few minutes. Now the Acer Triton 500 is a good laptop and it's on this list if you're doing something more than SolidWorks. And the reason I say that is because though this is an incredibly specced out machine, it has the i9-12900H, it has the RTX 3080 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM, it only performed at about a 99 score on the SOLIDWORKS benchmark compared to something like the G14 with I believe a 163 off the top of my head. And so 
for about $1,000 less, you're getting more performance in solid work. So don't always think that more GPU and more CPU will always be the answer. I'm gonna show you some benchmarks here in a few minutes. But if you want guaranteed performance, I would definitely go with a workstation GPU as they are built for SolidWorks. If you are a primary SolidWorks user, that is my top recommendation. All right, moving forward, we're looking at the MSI Stealth GS77, really good power packed laptop there. The MSI Titan GT77, that is a beast of a laptop as well. And then here we go, getting into the workstation GPUs. So we have the Dell Precision 5000 with the RTX A3000. We have the HP ZBook Studio and Fury. Again, these laptops can be upwards of $10,000. But if you go to HP's website, I'll link links in the description below for all of the models we're talking about here in this video. You can actually configure it to your liking. If it were me, I would go for an i7 processor and the highest a series, so the RTX Quadro, so the Quadro RTX A series, the highest you can go for your budget. The i7 will be plenty. Really, where you want to put your money is the GPU, um, and that is really my recommendation. And then, of course, we have the ProArch Studio Book. Now, this comes in a variety of configurations. One of those configurations is the Xeon W11955M with the RTX A5000. I believe off the top of my head, that's a $5,000 laptop and actually pretty hard to get. But if I were gonna get any laptop on this lineup, I would be getting the ProArt Studio Book. I love the build quality. I love the features. It has something called the dial. I've been fanboying over this dial since I reviewed it last year. It has the three button click, which is fantastic for architecture 3D modeling programs like SolidWorks. And it's got a great keyboard, nice large trackpad, and a big 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 16 inch screen, OLED screen. So this is just my favorite laptop for creators if you can find it. The problem was, I don't know if they made enough of them last year because they sold out so quickly. And uh, that's kind of the bummer about the StudioBook Pro 16 OLED, but definitely my top recommendation. Okay, now let's get into explaining the specs here. In regards to the central processing unit, the CPU, workstation CPUs like the Xeon and Threadripper are good options for SolidWorks. But if you're gonna try to make the most of your budget, I would not make it the highest priority. The reason being is whenever you get a workstation CPU, it automatically comes with a workstation GPU. Now you might say, Ben, well, you're kind of contradicting yourself because you said, Workstation GPUs are the best, and they are, but I'm talking about if you're on a budget. If you're on a budget below $1,500 or $2,000, it's extremely difficult to find a workstation GPU at that price point. It just really is. So for me, if I'm on a budget, I would really, my top recommendation personally, what I would go out and buy today would be the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the Radeon GPU, that RX 6700S or the 6800S. So if you get the RX 6700S, you're gonna be sitting at around $1,600. And that's like the thing, you know, you're gonna say, Ben, that's not a budget. But I'm saying if you're kind of that mid budget. Now, if you're on a more tight budget, you're gonna be looking at the HP Victus or the Lenovo Legion 5. You know, those are gonna be more of the lower uh, budget end, you know, around the $1,000 price point. Now, I know that these laptops aren't necessarily cheap and it, it I'm sorry if you do have budget constraints. I totally understand. I've been there um, as I you know, sit in a pile of laptops, which none of these I technically own. They're all just on loan from brands. So I understand the pain. I'm just trying to give you real, true information so that way you don't buy a cheap laptop and are disappointed with its performance. Now looking at the RAM, random access memory, let's do a quick explanation. Basically every time you open an application, your computer is gonna pull from the RAM. So you wanna have enough RAM to run, you know, maybe Google Chrome, listening to some music and then running SolidWorks, right? So Google Chrome can use about two to five gigs of RAM by itself. So that's why I recommend a starting point of 16 gigs of RAM. If you look on the SolidWorks website, they actually say that 16 gigs of RAM is the recommended minimum. And that's gonna be my recommended absolute minimum as well. I think any 3D modeling guru or you know student should be at 32 gigs of RAM. That would be my top recommendation because let's say you're web browsing, listening to music, you've already burned through about six to eight gigs of RAM. And then you open up SolidWorks and it will start to bottleneck because you don't have enough RAM to run it, even at 16 gigs. So that's why I recommend 32 gigs as the best. 
Um, if you look at the chart here, it says that the PDM contributor is about 16 or more is what it prefers. And then the viewer or electrical schematic is at about eight gigs or more. So really the safe spot is gonna be that 32 gigs of RAM. Now the graphics processing unit, as I mentioned in the beginning, do you need a GPU for SolidWorks? There's no question, absolutely yes. Historically, having a workstation GPU like an NVIDIA A5000 or a P2000 was a must, but gaming GPUs such as the Radeon RX and NVIDIA RTX are making their way up the charts, which we're gonna see here in just a second. Hang in there. So if you want ultimate performance, you want a workstation certified SolidWorks GPU, which is an NVIDIA Quadro A2000 or P2000, um, those are ones that they literally work with SolidWorks to make sure that they are certified and can receive feedback for their GPUs. Now the storage, I always recommend SSD. If you don't know much about SSD, basically it's a very big thumb drive rather than a spinning disc with an I. So it just reads and writes immediately to the hard drive. They're more reliable, they're faster, um, and they're gonna last longer. Now looking at the charts here, as you can see the top laptops on the charts are those workstation GPUs. We have the HP ZBook Fury, which has the RTX A5000, followed by the ASUS ProArch Studio Book 16, which also has the A5000. And then right behind those is actually that RX GPU from Radeon inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14. So it's the RX 6700S. So like I said, if you're in that kind of mid price point, that is a great buy. Now below that we have the HP ZBook Power and then again the Asus ProArt with the RTX 3070 GPU. And then you can see kind of the rest of them tear off down the line. As soon as you get out of those workstation GPUs, you can see a basic plateau. The highest numbers you can get outside of that Zephyrus G14 are gonna be the hundreds to about the 70s. So really buying a 3080 Ti, right, in the Triton versus buying a Lenovo Legion 5, which maybe has an RTX 3060, is not really gonna do that much. That's why I recommend a nice i7 or Ryzen 9 6900HS or Ryzen 7 6800H or an i9 12900H, like, like a really good performing processor with say six gigs of VRAM in an RTX 3060. To me, that is your sweet spot and it's where you're gonna get the best bang for buck because adding a 3080 with a 99 on the chart didn't make a big difference, right? And that's gonna cost you an extra maybe 800 to $1,000 for that bigger GPU in this laptop. So. That is really where my recommendation is. Don't worry so much about the GPU if it's not a workstation. Six gigs would be where I'd start. The 3050 Ti's are good, but they only have four gigs of VRAM, so they don't have as much power as I would personally want. RTX 3060 and above will be solid, but I really think the 3060 is the sweet spot. Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase. Please provide me with your comments on anything I might have missed or some things you wanna know in the next iteration of this video. That feedback is always extremely helpful. Likes of this video has brought you some value. It really helps out my channel and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.